But I'm a free surfing and a landscape artist from Dumfries and I paint in oils. I left college about five, six years ago, so I've tried to focus pretty much everything that we paint in. I thought, right, I'll give it till I'm 30. <laughs> and then wait and see if I get a proper job if it doesn't work out. <laughs> Through college, I kind of tried everything. But I just kind of found landscapes kind of clicked, it just happened. And you've got to go with it, really. Kind of don't think about it too much and just follow it. I'm out walking like with the dogs and stuff, so I'm surrounded by it. Five minutes out of peace, and you've got landscape everywhere. You know, so you're kind of like, you've got to do something. You've got to, you've got to paint. I found as well, like there's a lot of good artists in the region, but I did feel like you know, I could put a spin on it too, you know? The process kind of starts, so I'll go out and take photos and stuff, and then I'll sketch them out, and then decide on a composition of, well, maybe crop that. And I'll generally do just like a little oil study. And then when you start the bigger painting, if you feel like you need to, sometimes a little study is good enough. If you can nail the little study and you can kind of get everything on that, try and follow that into your painting, the bigger one. Sometimes if you're painting the region, everyone knows what that rock looks like. So if you do the study, it's kind of a way of cleansing yourself as well, because you're kind of, you're not looking at a photograph, you're taking it from a total different angle. And that's what you want to do, isn't it? That's basically what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to achieve something what, what you've not done before, but use all your techniques and what you've learned and your inspiration and try and put it all together. I generally find the best paintings are unexpected. You know, you're walking the dog late at night because it's too hot for them, and then you catch a beautiful sunset, and you're kind of compelled to paint it because you're kind of like, I'm the only person in this field or on top of this hill at this point in time. You take a couple of photos, go back, sketch it out. As long as it's in your head, you can leave something for months. Some of the paintings I've got here, like, I've not touched them for six months. But the, it's still in my head, so I know, I know I can go back to it. But I think most of the influence comes from the region anyway. When I paint, I need to have a clear head. I need to be clear. I need to be at one with the picture, with the painting. And you need to completely immerse yourself in it. Honestly, I don't think people talk enough about how people can influence your work. You know, it might not be directly, but a conversation with a friend might be going through a bad time. Their outlook on things can completely inspire you. Sometimes what starts off is maybe a brighter painting. How you're feeling at the time or what you've been up to can completely change that. And I just try and be as free as possible. Any viewer, anyone who's looking at the painting pictures, you're not going to tell them at all, but you want them to kind of have their feel in it. That's the best compliment, and I've been lucky to have it quite a few times, is to be like, I feel that. That reminds me of this or that. I had an exhibition just at Kukupri there. I had a meltdown, I was nearly crying because everything I was trying to do just was like, never, it wasn't working. So I just sprayed some white spirit all over it, all over the painting, because I was like, well, it's ruined anyway. But through that, I actually found some interesting marks and found a way, and then all of a sudden, done two paintings in one day. Well, I'm sold. So it should be a release. It should be enjoyment. It should be fun. So I always try and keep it fun. <laughs>